Today I'm going to talk about a controversial way on how I built a team of 27,000 plus inside network marketing. So the reason why it's controversial is because a lot of leaders out there tell you otherwise. Okay. And I want to tell you there's good news. There's more than one way to build a network marketing opportunity, especially today since the, the industry has evolved so much. I'm an introvert. Okay, so if I've always bucked the system. I've always bucked the sponsors that sponsor me in network marketing, and I wanted to do it my way ever since I started in 2014. In fact, I blocked my sponsor when I started network marketing because I didn't want them to bark orders at me and get me on three-way calls or anything else. Because I, like I said, I had social anxiety, I was newly sober, and I wanted to do it my way. Of course, it was hard the first couple years, but I finally got it and I started to attract or recruit people around the clock on autopilot. If you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. We're going to dive into some nuggets and I'm going to talk about step by step on how I built a team of 27,000 in eight months in my current company. So the first thing I did that a lot of old school leaders tell you not to do is I recruited a lot of people and I just gave them a welcome letter with some tips. Now, old, old school leaders say that you shouldn't just recruit a lot of people because that's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping that it sticks. Well, I did that exactly. I recruited so many people, over 300, that I did pray that some would stick because I didn't want to do Zoom calls or anything else. And I didn't even have a Facebook group to plug them into, except my own. I didn't have a team Facebook group yet. Uh, I didn't know who our, our leader was. So I was like, I'm going to be the leader. So um, when I recruited someone, I manually sent them a, a welcome letter that had all the tips that they needed uh, to start recruiting their own people. And that was it. I didn't reach out to them anymore. Okay, that's controversial. People are like, oh, you should you should work with them closely until they get their two reps. Well, I didn't because a lot of people that I did try that to, they they completely ghosted me anyways. So I wasn't going to work with anyone unless they reached out to me. I gave them my Facebook. I gave them my phone number, my text. I was like, text me if you have any questions. If they don't text, they're not motivated enough. All right, so I did just keep recruiting until I found people that were willing to work, that wanted to reach out, that that said, "Hey, thanks, Eric, for the welcome letter. I'm going to dive into the training, and I'm going to I'll reach back out to you later." That's what I wanted to hear. If I got crickets, move on to the next person. Okay, so the next thing I did that was controversial was uh, if I did get a potential leader. Now, mind you, I'm, I do not do Zoom calls, which I'll get to in a minute, but uh, if, if anyone on my team that I recruited wanted, wanted a Zoom call, uh, I was like, um, I, I would like you to you know, train your own team. And that is super controversial, okay? A lot of people would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you told me that. But surprisingly, the people that did wanna succeed were like, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll do Zooms for my own team. And that was it. All right. So um, again, this is in the very beginning when I didn't know who my, you know, who the top leader was. Okay. And so I didn't have his Facebook group to plug people into. This is in the beginning. So I'm like, you know, could you really, you know, you can do your own Zooms. I don't do them. I have social anxiety. And they're like, cool, no problem. You know, if honesty goes a long way, vulnerability and honesty go a long way. All right. And they, they liked me. Most people liked me because I was vulnerable and honest. And I was like, you know what? I, I really don't do Zooms. I'm scared to death. I have social anxiety. And they're like, no problem. Uh, moving on to the next thing. Now, this one isn't controversial, but it did motivate my team a lot in the beginning was I basically was like, you know, if you recruit, if you get on the leaderboard, I'll give you $500. Whoever gets on the top of the leaderboard, First place, I'll give you five hundred dollars. That motivated my team. This is in the, in the beginning, okay. And then the second month, when I started making more, I I upped it up to a thousand dollars. I was like, 
I'll give anyone who hits platinum rank a thousand dollars. So I had like three people I told that to, and they were they were competing against each other. And when someone would recruit three people, I would tell the other person, "Hey, they just recruited three. You know, you you you're still in the race. You better hurry up." So I would kind of like pit them together and get them competing against each other, and that got massive results. Plus, I I you know I paid the winner a thousand dollars. Um. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's bullet points of what I didn't do that's controversial to what old school leaders tell you you have to do. The uh, first one, which is I love this, is I didn't do any three-way calls. I didn't. In fact, in the last nine years, I've only done two. And, and one of them, I was tricked onto it. I didn't know that they were going to do that to me. So... Um, you can build a six-figure business, multiple six-figure business without, without doing three-way calls. I don't like three-way calls because I feel like it's a tag team. Okay, you have two people trying to convince one person to join. And most of the time they do join because they don't want to embarrass themselves. They don't want to look like a total uh, prig or, you know, whatever, uh, and so they sign up, but a month or two later, they quit silently, secretly. But, you know, if I had two people tag teaming against me, I'd probably go, all right, well, I'll, yeah, I'll sign up. Okay. I don't like it. All right. I think it's, I think it's, um, it, it goes, it's predatory. Okay. It's simply predatory. No one wants to get stuck on a three-way call, uh, usually by surprise, and even, you know, with mental health issues these days, you know, it's, it's terrifying, you know, it's nerve wracking to have someone go, just hold on a second. I'm going to bring on Bob. It's like, who's Bob? W wait, wait a minute. I'm just talking to you. All right. So I hate those. I hate, I freaking hate three-way calls. Um, the other thing I didn't do, I didn't edify my sponsor because my sponsor God bless him for sharing the opportunity with me. You know, I don't think he promoted it that heavy and didn't get that far in the ranks. And I still love the guy, but I didn't need to edify him because I was making more money than him. All right. And I, I basically didn't edify anyone and I didn't talk about the money for a long time. I talked about the momentum of the company and how they were doing things differently. And that was enough for people to sign up. I just piqued curiosity and got them to the landing page of the opportunity and had them watch the six minute video. Um, the other thing I didn't do, I didn't mention the products. I didn't mention the company name. How dare I? I didn't mention the products. No, because when you slap up product images on social media, it looks like you're selling something. It, it looks spammy. Okay, what you want to do, and I did learn this from an old school veteran uh, in network marketing, is that you pique curiosity. You say, "Hey, I'm, you know, I'm. Are you open to a new income source? This thing just launched, and we already have ten thousand members in three weeks. Watch the video as soon as possible." You know, that was that was the tone I had. Hey, we're going places. You know, either you come with us or sayonara. And watch the video as soon as possible. And I share my link. Um, very simple. Keep it very simple. The more you explain it, the more they're going to find a reason to not join you. Okay. And if you mention the product or the name of the company before they take a tour, they're going to go to Google and they're going to join the first person that, sign, that uh, shows up on the first place of Google. If you're like, hey, it's ABC company. They'll be like, just a minute. And they disappear. They go to Google. Then they find the best SEO guy who's hammered that company name. He ranks the top five spots in Google or she. And then you just you just lost your, your prospect. So you always pique curiosity and have them watch the video on your landing page. Hopefully your company has a landing page. Um, so the... Uh, back to no zooms. I'm, I'm proud of this. Okay. I, I do not. That's the other thing is 
old school trainers are like, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to really get out of your comfort zone for massive success. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do Zooms. Everyone is Zoom crazy. In fact, on Bloomberg, on the, the news I watched a couple months ago, Bloomberg, one of the news titles was, when that Zoom call could have been an email. And I loved it. Okay, people are Zoom crazy. It's inefficient. You're stuck on a Zoom for an hour or two hours with just some leader going, this is it. This is your last opportunity and you need to talk to everyone three feet around you. I don't care if they block you. Keep going. Burn bridges. You know, represent MLM, which, you know, basically destroys MLM. That's why there's such a huge anti-MLM movement is because people are trying to trick people onto Zoom calls, three-way calls, house parties, hotel meetings. They're super loud extroverts, and I don't relate to any of them. That's why I did it my way, and it works. I've done this in several companies. I've made over $300,000, $400,000 in network marketing. As an extreme introvert, I just create content, and I attract people to me. All right, so if they're looking for the best new MLM in 2024, they see my video. Who's this guy? I'm going to watch it. Oh, he sounds good. I like him. I'm going to take a tour in his opportunity. And I did that with a blog too. YouTube, blog, long post on, you know, wherever you want. Okay. You attract people to you by creating content. And all the leaders have a lot of content. They might not tell you that because they don't want to scare you away, but the big leaders have over 500 videos on YouTube. They have 5,000 followers on Facebook. They do long posts. They have websites. They've written over 1,000 articles. They don't want to tell you that. They don't want to scare you away, but they're doing massive content. Some of them even have eBooks. All right? So create content. It's called attraction marketing. You're attracting prospects to you. That's the other thing is only 5% of my team or the people that I recruited, they came from Facebook, only 5%. The rest have come from this channel, YouTube. I do a video, I talk, I tell my story, and then I give some bullet points on the benefits of my company. And then I say, click the link under this video to take a free tour into our number one opportunity. And you make sure that your link is clickable. It turns blue. You got to add the HTTP and the www. Make sure it's clickable. And if you do enough videos, eventually, it could be seven months from now, YouTube will start raising your video up if you have a good one. Okay. It's all about click-through rate and watch duration. So if you're not getting those, work on those. Click-through rate and watch time duration. If people are only watching 5% of your video, you better get a better hook. Okay. If your click-through rate is, is only 5%, you better get a better thumbnail. Those things can be tweakable. All right. So you need to know SEO as a network marketer. So only 5% has come from Facebook. I'm not on Facebook all day pitching people. All right. I did in the beginning. I didn't pitch a lot of people, maybe only a hundred. But a lot of the people I did recruit usually came from a curiosity uh, post, which is on those colored notepad background colors things. Um, something easy, you know, earn without recruiting, PM me. Earn without recruiting, PM me. Earn without recruiting and selling expensive products, PM me. And then they go, more info. And I go, I PM'd you. And I gave them my link to my landing page. I want everyone to take the free tour. And that's it. Work your way up to 10 to 20 leads a day consistently. Never stop creating content. And you will go far. Uh, so this is a middle finger to old school network marketers that tell you you got to do Facebook Lives, Zooms all day long, three-way calls, convince everyone three feet around you to join because you're burning bridges. Okay, that's why there's an anti-MLM movement. You want a, you want to attract people to you. And yes, it could take longer. It could take six months to a year to get enough content to attract leads to you. But that's the ultimate way. I'm getting signups around the clock without pitching anyone anymore. I have enough videos that are doing the work for me. They're recruiting around the clock for me. 
and it's beautiful. And I can go for walks and shoot videos. I can start doing a vlog style. I can just go for a walk and talk to you guys like normal without the rah, rah, hyper extroverted, loud, old school network marketing style. I can just be me. I can be vulnerable. I can talk about mental health, social anxiety, because I have a lot of people on my team that are like, you know, I'm scared to death of doing video. And I'm like, that's fine. You can just download one of the company videos and change the title. They're like, really? Great. There's ways around everything. And you can create success if you want it bad enough. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And we'll talk to you soon.